quickest way to build a template other than buying one? Well, I'll show you the way I build templates because I'm not sure other people do it in this way. And it might be a stupid thing, me showing you this, because <laughs> everyone else will probably start using it unless you're doing something similar already, but I like sharing things with people. So let me share this with you. When I create a template, first of all, I need to know what sampler I'm using. So if I'm building a template for a library using contact seven, then what I do is create one instrument track with the sampler on and then rename it to something like ref for reference. I'll then keep this instrument editor open of that instance and put it over to the right of my screen somewhere. And the reason for this is that when you're adding other tracks and loading patches, the quickest way to load patches into those other instances of contact is just by having one of your folders open here in your reference instrument and just drag and drop them directly over instead of opening up the instrument editor for each track and then going through the folders to find your patch. It's a really quick way of doing it. Tip number one. For me, when I build templates, I've got this one little button right here and it's called template build. I don't know if you can see that. Now, when I press this button, it'll do a bunch of different things. The first thing it'll do is it'll bring up the add tracks dialog. And then from here, I can choose how many instrument tracks I want to create. Generally, what I'll do is I'll open up the folders of a library and, and count how many patches there are for a spe specific instrument. So, for example, for the ensemble trumpets of Cinebrass Core, there's six patches. So we have articulations. Uh, the legato sustains, uh, apes, quarters, and halves, which are the short notes. So let's go ahead and add six instances of contact. Seven. Now, I'm not going to name these. I'm just going to add them. Now, some weird stuff just happened. You'll notice that the tracks got placed inside a folder, and then the name, the default name of contact seven, has been completely replaced with this, tag.name- and then the PLE window opens up. Now, what I do next is select a PLE and then I rename battery name stuff. But let me just show you what command just got executed. So let me open up the template builder command. The pre process commands is what happens before executing what you've got in the middle of the PLE. Okay. So the first thing I've told it to do is add tracks to bring up that little dialog window. Then what will happen is I'll choose the sampler, I'll type in the amount and click add. Once those tracks gets added, Cubase will then go, right, if the name contains contact, contact seven, Musio, instrument track, opus or sign, I want you to select those tracks and add them into a folder. And then once it's added those tracks into a folder, I want you to execute this PLE command called rename tracks, which is one that I've built. So let me go over to that for you. So the rename tracks command, what this will do is if the, the track is already selected and it contains the name contact, contact seven, opus, BBC, museo sign or instrument track, it's going to do the following. So if there's a track with the name contact seven, I want to change it to contact. Now, if you're wondering why, Cubase has a thing about numbers. And if I was to try to execute this command without changing this to contact, what would happen is, is when it's generating the tracks with the numbers, the seven in the title of contact causes some hiccups. So every now and then you'll see a random seven in the naming. So to eliminate this, what you need to do is tell um, Cubase to take that title with the number in and just change it to something without the number in, so contact. Afterwards, it'll then take the word contact and replace it with this, which is our tag.name dash. And it will do the same for any other sampler with these words in the title. OK, so that's what that does. Now, when the PLE pops up after it's created these tracks, I can then select this one that I've made called name articulations PLE command. Now, what this command does is select anything with tag.name in the title. So I built a separate command for that, which is here. So anything that contains tag.name, select it, because I've changed the, the, the filter condition down at the bottom here to select. Um, 
So it'll do that. So it'll select these tracks again. And then if those tracks are selected, which they are, I want to perform these transform actions to it. Anything with tag in the name, I want to replace the word tag with something else. So let's put CBC for Cinebrass Core. For this next replace search string, it's going to target the name in the middle. So we know we want to build these patch, uh, create these trumpet patches. So let's name these trumpets. The next one allows me to choose a color to apply to the track. So red, because it's brass and I like to use red. And then from here, I'm going to type out those articulation names that I know. So articulations for the key switches, Gato, sustains, and then eights, quarters, halves. Now, when I click apply, this is going to replace all those names with what I've typed out, like so. Nice quick way of naming, tagging, and colorizing your templates. Now, I've got these post-process commands as well that I could use. Um, so if I, if I want to take these tracks, do this stuff, and then add them to a group channel, I can check this box on the post commands to do so. And if I also want to add it to an effects channel, I can do that as well. So let me just click that. And you can see here, it's done that stuff again. And then it's brought up the group track, and I can call this trumpets. And that means now we've tagged all them, colorized all them, and we've routed it to its own group faders so we can control all those articulations. I mean, you can do this with a VCA as well if you wanted to. Depends on how you want to work. Um, but yeah, it's just a quick way of doing things. And then all I would do now that we've created the track names is using our reference is this. I would uh, select that top one and load in the articulations. And I've got another button on uh, the stream deck here that I've made that will select the next track and then open up the instrument editor for it like so. Whoops, closed it. There we go. Um, and then you can just carry on, you know, drag and dropping stuff in as you see fit. So, uh, what was it? Sustains, apes, quarters, halves. That's it. That's all the patches loaded. I can now disable these and then move on to the next instrument and its articulations. And, th and this is how I go about building them. And then once I've done this for all the instruments in the entire library, I would then take the subgroup instruments, these, and then route them to the master groups, do the effects sends, then go through the template, do any gain staging, high pass, low pass filters, negative track delays, and do all that stuff last. Well, not last. The last thing I do is create visibility configurations. But that's generally the process for it. And when you compare that to doing it this way, you know, let's remove all these. This is how most people would build their templates. They would, uh, you know, go to the Add Tracks dialog, go, oh, I want 100 instances of something. Or oh, let's, just, let's just do 20. I need 20 instances of Contact 7. And then you'd come through and go Brass, Legato. Go to the next one, Brass, Short, Brass, Pit. And it just takes forever. Now, if you don't, if you're not confident with the PLE, here's a couple more tips for you. So instead of typing out the names yourself, go ahead and load a patch in like this. So trumpet solo articulations. I don't know if you know you can do this, but you can actually just click and drag the text. And if you press Control and C, you can copy that text and then Control and V to paste it into your track. That's one way you can do it. Some samplers won't allow you to do this, and an example of that would be Opus. So if you're working with Opus, this is what I would suggest doing, because I used to do this before the method I've just shown you with the commands. Um, so Opus. I would go, right, okay, let's go to the brass, French horns, long. So I know there's seven instrument tracks. I would create another six instrument tracks because I've already got one open, like so. And then what I would do is then right click on one of the patches and then go to show in desktop. And this will take you directly to the location where those patches are on your machine. 
I mean, what I'd do is I'd shrink the window down for win uh, for Cubase like this, put these next to each other, and then on the Stream Deck, um, I have a Windows buttons. I've forgotten what app it's using, but it allows you to control certain Windows functions. So I've got one here that will allow me to rename something in Windows. So I can click this to rename that patch I've just selected. Click the next one to copy it. And then I can come back to my track here and my mouse is, allows me to do a double click with one click. And then I can paste it. So select next one, rename, copy, paste. Rename, copy, paste. Rename, copy, paste. And that's another way you can do it. And then you can use batch functions to remove certain things that you don't want or move them around. That's another way you can work. So I think I, I, I've covered what I wanted to cover in this video. If I've missed anything, let me know. Or if you have any questions about it, let me know. Um, but hopefully this is giving you a bit of an insight into a, a different way you can approach building templates. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, give it a big fat thumbs down. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.